And welcome to Solano Community College for this exciting Bay Valley Conference matchup between the visiting Contra Costa Comets and your Solano Falcons right here on the Solano College Sports Network. My name is Brian Nelson. I will be your play-by-play -play man for the evening. And then joining us in the booth, a very special guest, women's basketball coach and former alum, Nicole White, as well as my broadcast partner, Anthony Williams. Nicole, what are your thoughts on this game? Um, it should be a really good game. You know, two very competitive teams. I think this is the closest that our guys have been a while to a BBC Conference Championship, and I feel like they really have the talent to do it. And I feel like this is the only team that's in their way of doing it. So it should be, it should be a, a nail-biter. Yeah, Contra Casa, winners of eight of their last nine games, so they're definitely on a hot streak right now in their season. But Solano has won four out of, the, out of their last six games, mm -hmm. as well as two in a row. Anthony, what's the key for Solano to get yet another win to keep this stretch going? Well, tonight, Solano's key is defense, definitely. As you can see, Contra Costa averages 80 points per game, and it will be exciting to see how Solano defends tonight. And this is exactly the kind of matchup we like to see on Solano Color Sports Network. A Bay Valley Conference rivalry, a very competitive game. We'll bring that to you, all the action with starting lineups, right after this message. Hi everybody, Greg Poff here in the Solana College Sports Network studios, and we sure hope you're enjoying today's special game broadcast. And if you're interested in a career in sports broadcasting or you would like to take one of our sports broadcasting courses here at the college, you can easily find them listed in the SCC Schedule of Classes under Communication Studies. Come on over to our TV studio in room 121 and check us out. Be a part of the Solano College sports broadcasting team. We're here at SCSN. It's more than just sports. It's an education. And we're back ready for tip-off. Solano starters are Brandon Davis and Jose Barfield, joined by Javon Adams, Jesse Carey, and Lorenzo Martinez. For Contra Costa, Bobby Simenthong, Larry Wickett, Danzel Walker, Deontay Smith, and Jalen Dominique. So Solano wins the tip. And Javon Adams starts the half-court offense. As Jose Barfield has it in the corner. Gets a screen for Martinez, kicks it out to Davis. Swings the ball around. Adams in the post. Kicks it to Martinez. And that ball is out of bounds. So Solano with an early turnover to start this game. They're just getting the nerves out. Just getting the nerves out. First couple minutes of the game. Turnover's understandable. As Contra Costa with Bobby Siventhong. Manning point. See what Contra Costa has in the half court set. Simenthong out to the corner. Corral by the Comets. Back up top, they're going to reset. Simenthong with the pick and roll. Out. Pump fake. Drives to his right, lays it up and out. Rebound. Back to the Comets. They spot up for three. It is long, but rebound again to the Comets. So some lucky breaks for the Comets off the rim as they double team in the post, kick it out, and that is good by Larry Wickett for the first point of this ball game. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game for Solano if they, they can't get the first rebounds. It's always important to get the first rebound because, you know, they get the second chance buckets just like we've seen Larry score. As Martinez gets his shot blocked, Simenthong lays it up and in on the counterattack, so Comets off to a 4 nothing lead. Yes, that was a beautiful fast break started by the comments and nice finish by Bobby. And Nicole, you were saying you know people on both sides? Yes. Um, Larry Wicket, number four, we graduated the same class, you know, played the same years and everything from freshman year to uh, senior year. So for people who haven't seen Larry in action, how would you describe his game to the viewers who haven't seen him play? Athletic, all, as all outdoors, you know. He can jump out the gym. He's got to work on his jumper <laughs> pretty much, but, yeah, he's a very good player, very good player. As Solano rebounded that, Comet miss, and Adams the other way. Can I hit the layup? Wicket with the rebound, pushing to the half court. Nice bounce pass. Tried to stuff it, but blocked by Martinez, but they're going to call a foul. Yes, yeah, Solano has to finish their fast breaks. They can't give up any points or leave any points on the court. 
Yeah, they got to get back on defense. You know, I really believe in this team. They they have the talent to do it. They have to believe in themselves. You know. As Anthony Solon goes to the line, the leading scorer for the Comets, averaging 16 points per game. Misses the first. As an early substitution for Solano, Patrick Ganaway checking in for Martinez. We see Ganaway a lot for Martinez. Sometimes Coach Nagel decides to start Martinez and go with Ganaway in the second half. Yeah, I really like Martinez's game, you know. He just, he's a presence down low. Whenever you know he's in there, can't come up there with any old layups and anything, he's going to make sure his presence is known. Yes, I agree with Nicole. Ganaway is a hustle player. He gets them all the dirty points down low, and he's very physical. As Adams in the post, nice hesitation. Had a clear shot, just too strong, didn't quite roll in. Comets, rebound. Good stop ball, good stop ball. To kick it to the corner. Into the post to Smith. Turnaround jumper too strong. Rebound by Jesse Carey. I'll say a Barfield. Surveys the defense, decides to pull it back. And Osea has been a man who's had a nice couple last games for Solano as he tees up the three and is good. He had 30 points against Mendocino and 22 against Yuba in both of Solano's last two wins. Yes, Hosea, you can't leave him alone. If he gets a little space from the three-point line, it's guaranteed to go in. Yeah, I really like Hosea's game. You know, it's not, He's not just one-dimensional. He's not just a shooter. He can also take it to the rack. And that's also good because once you, once you get going that way, once you get going offensively, then there's no way they can stop you. Either going to shoot it or drive. He's very good at that. He's great for Solano. And the drive for Davis was blocked by the Comets. So the Comets have possession in the tie ball game 5-5. As Siventhong pulls up for three. A little bit of contact from Ganaway. No call, though, as Carey rebounds it. Osea passes about to Davis for the... Half court offense. Osea sets the screen for Carey. Picked off by Siventhong. Nice move in the open court to get two. Yes, that was just a lazy pass. You can't do any lazy passes around this Comets team. They are very athletic and very quick. Yeah, no plays off. Jose again. Yeah. Speaking of very quick, Hosea drives to the rack for the deuce. He simply just knows how to get where he has to go. You know, he's a small player, you know. With me, I always have to find a certain way of getting to the basket, but he just knows how to get there. Great rebound by Hosea. And good communication by Solano on the switch as Davis drives, lays it up and out. Battle for the rebound, goes away to the comics. Dominique on the counterattack, lays it up with the left hand, rebounded one-handed by Davis, pushing out to Barfield, but that pass a little too high for Hosea. And so Solano makes a couple substitutions with R.J. Lewis and Tim Moore, bringing athleticism and size off the bench. Yeah, they're very versatile. They're very good off the bench. R.J. has very good defense. And Tim, he's just a solid all-around player. Great for Solano. You need, you need players like that on your team. Tim very much reminds me of like a Harrison Barnes where he's kind of <laughs> lengthy as a, as a power forward as he is right now. Offensive foul called. Anthony Sullen. Yes, that was a nice defense by Hosea, knowing that he was trying to power himself in into the hole, and he just simply stood there and took the charge. As Steven Jefferson checks in for Jesse Carey. Another long, athletic, big man for Solano to come off the bench. As Contra Costa also makes a substitution with Jeremiah Alston. as well as Ray Jackson, who was guarding Hosea. Gave him too much room, though. Hosea hits a three in his face. Man down, man down. Like I was saying earlier, if he gets a little space, he's going to pull up, and he will guarantee to hit it. So Hosea hits his first two three-point shots. Has to be a good sign for Solano. As Ray Jackson tries to answer with the three, just rims out, but that tip... Look like, was that off Solano and into the basket? Definitely off yeah. Solano. Uh, it may, but it happens, though. They're just so close up to the rim. It, it happens. As the pass inside to Lewis from Ganaway. Out to Jefferson. Try to swarm him. They kick it to Jose in the corner. Being guarded by Jackson. Blows by him. Nice pump fake, and he draws the foul. 
So Jose having a real nice first half for Solano early on. Yes, I think once he gets himself started, there's no stopping him. He likes to get to the hole, and he has the, the three-point shot to keep the defense off balance. So Jose will go to the line for two. He's 76% free throw shooter on the year. Yeah, once Jose gets going, you know, it, it's very hard to stop him. He really does have a hot hand. As Contra Costa makes a substitution with DeAndre Russell, checking into the game for Deontay Smith. Jose's second free throw is good. So Solano extends the lead 12 to 9 with 14 minutes left in this first half. As Bobby Simenthong, the point guard, drives to his left. Nice tip by Jefferson. Moore to Jefferson in the fast break. Lays it up and in. Gets the kind roll on the finger roll. See, that's good how they got on the fast break. They play their game. This would be a very good game. The Solano's have to just play their game and not play into CC's, CC's uh, game plan. Yeah, good point by Nicole. Last couple drives, they've gotten blocks on Brandon Davis and company, but Jefferson not afraid to take it in as Contra Costa responds with a Russell layup. Yeah, that was nice penetration by Ray Jackson and with the dish off. And you know of Ray Jackson, I believe, Anthony, right? Yes, me and Ray Jackson went to the same high school, Rodriguez High School. And Ray Jackson, he's, he's just very athletic like most of the Comets players. Yeah, you watch pregame warm-ups. They're all, they're all trying to dunk it, get the highlight dunk. As Hosea with the pull-up jumper, you know he's feeling it. That was a heat check. Yeah, he's definitely feeling it. As R.J. Lewis steals the ball, and Hosea going to be called for a travel. But Hosea's hot start as he'll get a little breather as Arash Aliar checks in for him. Yeah, Raj, I really like Raj. You know, I actually had a conversation with him yesterday, you know, because I always come in, I sit in, watch their practices, you know, and I honestly told him, like, I didn't think you were a baller, but when I watched the <laughs> Mendocino game, he has great footwork, you know. Like, when I played on the East Coast, I've seen a lot of guys with a great footwork, but he's the only guy I've seen so far on the West Coast, like, with really good footwork. And you need that in the game of basketball. I've been really impressed. When he drives to the lane, he kind of looks out of control, but he manages to control his body and finish layups inside as a small guard. It's pretty impressive from Aliar. Yes, it's kind of like Leandro Barbosa. Very, it looks like he's out of control, but he knows exactly what he's doing. As Dwight Wilson misses that jumper, they're going to call a foul off the ball on the rebound on Stephen Jefferson. Yeah, this has really been, like, it's not really a fast-paced game, but it hasn't been much fouling, you know. Should be a really good game. Yeah, only the second team foul on Solano. Both teams with two team fouls. Has pull up three for Ray Jackson. Rattles home. So Ray Jackson cuts the lead down. 16 14 Solano leads. As Aliar passing it to Moore. Trying to work off the ball, trying to find an open man. Tim Moore dribbles to his left. Picked off by the Comets. Larry Wickett. Passing over, Comets save it inside, passing it back out. I think they're going to settle down. So Solano really close to forcing a turnover there, but Comets managing to settle down. As they're going to call a travel there on Jeremiah Alston on that move. Yes, there is a great defense being played by both teams. As you can see, this game is still very close. Yeah, they both must have really got the scouting report on each other because, you know, they're both great teams, very deep on the bench as well as uh, their starters, you know. And Anthony Sullen checking into the game, the leading scorer coming off the bench, as well as Marquise Pippins. So there's a Chance Pippin for Solano and there's a Marquise Pippins for uh, Contra Costa. Can tell them <laughs> apart. They don't look anything alike, folks. <laughs> as Aliar gets the ball. There he Pump goes with that fantastic footwork. And a good shovel pass inside to Steven Jefferson for two. That was a really tough play by Raj. You know, you got to have a lot of, body, a lot of body, body control for that. Contra Costa down by four. Into the corner for three. What I, I like about Solano is that they're protecting the paint. As you can see, like nobody's really guarding the three-point, which is very really smart to do because... The comments, they are a very athletic team, but they don't have the shooting ability. 
as Javon Adams there tried to knife his way in there for the layup. Could not get there. They're going to call jump ball. Possession arrow is to the comments, I believe. But yeah, that was just great effort by RJ right there. You know, tying it up for that jump ball. Yeah, so next time Solano gets a, one of those 50-50 balls, they'll get possession as the arrow switches. So with 11 minutes left in this first half, 18-14 is your score. Spin move by Jackson, pull up, short, rebounded by Javon Adams. Yeah, now that you said something, I really do notice that they haven't, they've really been shutting down the paint, you know. Three, uh, CC must not be a, um, a very good three-pointing uh, shooting team, but the fact that that's in their game plan, their game plan, you know, they're, they're executing it very well. As Aliar drives lane and he is fouled, so he'll go to the line shoot two. Arash is a 62% free throw shooter. So Arash will try and extend this lead. Shooting two. Misses the first. As Contra Costa makes a lot of substitutions. Four new members <laughs> of the Comets. I'll try and name them all. Bobby Simenthong, Jalen Walton, as well as Larry Wickett. And Deontay Smith. Yes, the Contra Costa, they are very deep, so they can't make substitutions like that. Yeah, it's, like, it's like it's hockey. They just have a whole new lineup out there, one of those hockey substitutions. Yeah, almost don't have enough chairs for the Comets all over there. <laughs> As Simenthong gets his layup attempt blocked by Jefferson. Yeah, they what? do have a very good, deep coaching staff over there. You know, the... Um, so does Solano. I really like Solano's coaches, you know. We got James Givens, you know, he's an ex-Solano player. And the fact that he, he takes the initiative, you know, like having them in the gym Monday, Tuesdays, 8 a.m., you know, he's very good for the program. As Ray Jackson tried and forced that shot, rebound goes out of bounds, going to stay contra Costa ball. Yeah, Larry Wicket almost finished that yeah. putback. <laughs> he it almost will, did. It will be exciting to see if he gets one. <laughs> well, he, they better watch out. <laughs> I, I advise, you know, if he gets going, mm. hey, I wouldn't even be mad if they moved out the way. <laughs> like Nicole said, Larry Wicket is very athletic. <laughs> yeah, he's very, athletic. very athletic. You know, he jumps out the gym, you know. So if he gets a full head of steam, you better watch out. As they call a foul off the ball, Lorenzo Martinez. So Ganaway going to check back in for Martinez. Don't want to get Martinez in foul trouble. Yeah, he's down. He's competing, though. Martinez, he's out there competing. That's what I was saying. Like, presence down low. Need that on the team. As Jackson for three. Short. Rebound, Javon Adams pushing it to Davis. Yeah, I see that Contra Costa kind of has a problem getting back, you know. And I love the way that Sloan's running the floor right now. You know, everybody's getting to where they need to be. As making their offense flow. As R.J. Lewis RJ. pull up three. So the lead is now eight points for Solano. As Contra Costa wants to take time. So 9.34 left in this first half. 22 to 14 is your score. Nicole, what has Solano done to be able to get this lead so far in this first half? They're just, they're being a, a team right now. They came, they came to play today. You can tell us by their attitudes, you know. They're running the floor well. They're all, you can see that they're all clicking on all cylinders, you know. Yeah. They're great on defense, keeping everybody outside the blue, you know, because they know that's Contra Costa's weakness. They're running the floor well. You know, and if, if all, they keep this going, they might pull out this game. And Anthony, what does Contra Costa have to do to, to solve Solano's defense that's been so solid in this first half? Well, they have to try to get the, get the ball inside the paint. They have to move the ball around. They're taking too many shots outside of the arc. If they get inside the paint and draw the fouls, then maybe Solano will have to go man-to-man -man instead of like just protect, protecting the paint. Another thing that Solano's doing very well, they're, they're shutting down their key players, you know. Like I said, Larry Wicket, we went to the same high school, you know. He's very effective offensively. They've done a great job of playing, defending him. If Larry gets going, then Solano's going to be in trouble. He had the three leading scores for the Comets. Wicket, Jackson, and Solon. We haven't called their name very much so far, and you can see it in the score. That's why Comets only have 14 points so far with half of the first half left. 
Yes, yeah. and that's big credit to Solano because they are shutting down their players, like Nicole said. They're not letting them get inside the paint. They're forcing them to shoot the ball, which they're not very good at. It's not their strongest asset. Yeah, I feel like they're, very, they're here mentally. They're all here mentally, you know. So it, it is kind of hard once you get tired and the fatigue sets in to crack down the game plan of, you know, we have to shut down our defender and stuff. But they're, they're doing a really great job of keeping their poise out there. And Contra Costa missed, uh, missed the second free throw, so the score is now 22-15 as Javon Adams' drive was blocked by the Comets. So nice great backdoor pass. find to Brandon Finish. Davis. Good pump fake. Great offense in the half court from Solano. Yeah, Brandon, he's just a legit point guard. You know, I love his game. I love his game. You know, can we played. My freshman year, he also played here as well. No, actually, it was my sophomore year he played here as well, you know, and he took a year off. I've always tell him he, I'm very proud of him, you know. Come back from the year off and come back strong, starting point guard. Yeah, the last game against Yuba, Brandon had 21 to, to go along with Barfield's 22 as Barfield tees up another three. It's automatic. It's automatic. They better guard him. Yes, you have to at least contest the shot because leaving him wide open is not – going to get the job done. If he if he gets a clear look at the basket, he is most likely to hit the shot. And that was not a replay, folks. Three threes from the exact same spot on the court. Hosea Barfield having a heck of a first half. As Contra Costa has to call a timeout, as Solano now has a 12-point advantage over the Comets. Yeah, like, Contra Costa has no choice but to play him up close now. And like I was saying earlier, once he gets that shot going, it opens up his drive. And that's the real difference so far from Solano as well. Solano having those three three-point shots from Josea Barfield and R.J. Lewis adding another, yet Contra Costa doesn't have a single three-point shot. Or maybe they have about one, but Solano's advantage definitely from behind the arc. Yeah, yeah once, once they get going, you know, it, it makes it very hard for a team to defend. Because, you know, if they're making three-point shots and then it opens up their drive, then it's very hard for them to figure out, like, what is going to be the real reason to stop them, you know? And briefly, we saw a shot of Kyle Osterstock, former uh, player here at Solano, former center. In the crowd. Nice to see a lot of s former Solano alums in the crowd to continue their support of the programs. That's another shot of the crowd. So 8.29 left in this first half. The Comets trying to find an answer to Solano's offense and defense. Really a great all-around game from the Falcons. Yes, I think... Um, Contra Costa actually underestimated Solano because in the warm-ups you can see they were playing around a lot, just dunking the ball, not really doing layups or shooting drills or anything. They were just having fun, and you can see it really hurt them now because Solano, they have momentum in this game, and if they continue to play like this, then they will get the win. Yeah, there's a lot of fun going on. They're throwing the ball off the walls of the gymnasium, trying to do uh, catch him off the bounce and uh, dunk it home. But uh, not really, doesn't really happen that way in the game that you get a ball bounce from uh, off the wall and you get a chance to slam it home. Yeah, this game is going really good, you know. As long as that Solano keeps their poise, you know, and keeps going hard, do not let up, keep their foot on the gas, they'll pull away with this one. And good play by Contra Costa's Jeremiah Olsen to block Brandon Davis. Looked like a little mini two-on-one after they broke the press with Barfield and Davis, but the length of Olsen changed that shot. 24 left on the clock. Barfield over to Davis in the corner. Drives. Swings it out to Lewis. Ganaway swatted away. Out of bounds. Still a lot of ball. So Comets trying to pick up their defense along the perimeter. Yeah, they're closing out on hold. Jose, real tough now. I think they got the message. <laughs> <laughs> I think they got it. 3-3 three, is too late if uh, you're a Contra Costa and rooting for them. You got to read the scouting report. You know, they know he's a shooter. I wouldn't have gave him no breathing room. And they're swarming him as he spins, shoots just long. I believe that's his first missed shot of the first half after a hot start. As Simenthong drives to his left, lefty scoop shot, rebounded by Ganaway. Lewis out to Davis, settles it down. Didn't like what he saw on that fast break transition offense. Contra Costa, they are not finishing, finishing this game. As 
you can see with the steal, they are very good defensively, which is helping them keep staying in the game a little bit, but they can't seem to finish their shots at all. Yeah, those second chance, second chance buckets, you know. You got to get those first rebounds, you know, because yeah. once they get one, two rebounds, then it's inevitable that they're going to score, you know. Yeah, they Give have them too many chances at the basket. And Ganaway ends up fouling them after three, four, five chances, trying to volleyball the, the ball into the basket. Yes. Like Nicole was saying earlier, they have to get the first rebound because if they keep continuing to get second chance, third chances, then it will cause Salam to get tired eventually. Good inbound play from Sivan Thong to Alston. As Xavier Smith checks into the game for Solano. Over to Adams, drives to his left, stops, tries to kick it out. He lost his footing there. Uh -oh. And Sivan Thong. Uh -oh. There oh, we go. Oh, in the open court, Larry Wicket slams it down from Sivan Thong. There we go. That's what we've been waiting for, right? Showtime. Yes, as, as you can see, the athleticism of Larry Wicket is unbelievable. Yeah, Simon Thong stole that pass, gave it to Wicket with plenty of space in front of him, slammed it home. Barfield oh, with a nice, nice acrobatic layup. layup. He just simply, he just simply know how to score. You know, he's shooting, he's driving. There's nothing that, there's nothing that CC can do right now. You know, he's in the zone. And because of that zone, Solano has a 10-point advantage with 6-10 left as Simenthong passes out to Wicket, being guarded by Adams. Yes. Now Ray Jackson being guarded by Smith. Offensive rebound again from the Comets. Yeah, see, no those second-chance buckets are, that's going to be the killer of Solano. If they have to shut down on that real fast, you know. The second-chance buckets, that's, that's a... A possession that Solano could have had, you know? Yeah, Solano's D is doing... And once they get that rebound, mm -hmm. you know, it's harder for them to stop their momentum of the offense. As Adams in with the flip shot, chest rattles out as Simenthong passes it out to Ray Jackson. Pull up three, two strong as Davis with the rebound. Yeah, I see Contra Costa is starting to play a lot of one-on-one -on -one ball, you know? Yes. They want to... They want to win this game, you know. They have to, they have to play together as a team, you know. Yeah. Not just one player trying yeah. to go to work. That yes. was great still. Yes, but they have to stop shooting the ball and drive to the hole. As See, a, when they drive to the hole, the good things happen. As a great finish by Anthony Sullen to take the contact finish with an acrobatic layup for and one. 29-21 is your score. As Solano, as Arash Aliar and Jesse Carey check back in. And for Contra Costa, Danzel Walker. So this free throw is good. So it's a seven point ball game now. As Contra Costa looks to press Solano now. As Jefferson, they try to steal. They have numbers, but Jefferson layup is no good. And Contra Costa on the counterattack, nice pass inside and finished by Anthony Sullen. A lot of contact, it looks like pinballs out there with people falling down, but Contra Costa able to lay it up and cut the deficit to five points. Yes, yeah, Solano, they have to finish th these um, easy shot opportunities because as you can see, Contra Costa, they can easily start a fast break and get down court real fast. Yeah, it also goes back to their fatigue level, you know. You can tell they're kind of tired and not really getting back on defense, you know. And Contra Costa has two fast breaks back to back. You know, they got to get back on defense, you know. Yeah. Got to get back. When you, when you have a three on one like that with Jefferson and you, you miss the layup, that automatically means Contra Costa has numbers on the counter attack. And Co Contra Costa was able to lay that up and in. Yeah, Contra Costa might have gotten away with two charges just now. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, how, it's how it is, you know. The ref's not going to make every call yeah, for you. you refs know? could be tired so too. You have to get back. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> They're running up and down. Whistle. They're human. You know, they're <laughs> running up and down with the athletic game. Yeah, so they got to learn to play through that. You got to learn to play through it. But they're also, they're, you know, they're a young team as well. How many sophomores do you have? For Contra Costa or Solano? No. Solano. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six officially on the roster. Oh, but okay. Andre Usher not playing so far. But Xavier Smith is a freshman. That is well, as I believe Arash is. 
And Davis with 12 on the shot clock. Gets a pick from Carey. Out to Tim Moore. Spots up for three. And that three-point shot is good from the lefty. Nice, nice shot, Tim. Uh, he definitely has the shot, the shooting ability to, to hit those threes. He just has to do it more consistently. Yeah, Tim does a little bit of everything for this Falcons offense and defense. It's nice to see him contribute from the outside. Yeah, he's a, he's a good solid player for Solano. Solid player all around. As he sets the screen there for Davis, Aliar gets the screen from Kerry himself, spins off, pump fake, there. tries to draw the foul, and he does. Yeah, he might have got away with a little <laughs> flop there. But it doesn't count if the ref calls it. Great call, ref. I know the soccer field's out there, just outside of the gymnasium. <laughs> LER, but, uh, he kind of reminds me of like a Manu Ginobili, like the way he plays with the footwork and the how he draws fouls, everything. But he's got all his hair. <laughs> no ball spot for LER. That's a good thing. As Contra Costa. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, no bullseye from our vantage point from uh, bullseye. yeah, <laughs> just got that bullseye right there. It's Contra Costa. DeAndre Russell checks in. So 3:50 left in the first half. 33-24 is the score. Simonthong kicks it out to the corner for three. That is short, long rebound. That was a necessary one for Solano. So Contra Costa get, doesn't get one of those second chance points that they've been getting in this first half. Yeah, that's all they have to do, you know, is get stops, get stops. It's not all about scoring sometimes. It's actually about st stopping the other team. You know? if, as long as they can't prevent them from scoring, you know, their offense will come to them. They will get buckets off of their, off of their great defense. Uh-oh. <laughs> as they have numbers, Car or, or, Arash tried to draw a foul. No call. But yeah. Solano gets the rebound. Those other two, <clears throat> them other two charges, you know, they were kind of 50-50. That one, you know, I, <laughs> that was definitely a charge. He had his feet set, but, you know. But yeah. I guess like I said, the refs, don't, they can't call everything. As Carey with a pump fake. But I guess Ball don't like since Solano, ball don't. you know, <laughs> Comets missed the shot. So no harm, no foul. This is Literally true. Literally no foul. <laughs> this is true, you know. Game gods know everything. As 2.45 left in this first half, Simon Thong shovels it off for three. Tim Moore, nice battle down low to get the rebound. Yeah, the Contra Costa there. Oh, you guys there. got numbers, got numbers. They're not moving the ball at all. They, they're they dishing it off one time, then shooting. Like, you have to make Solano move if you want to get get the win tonight. And speaking of Solano moves, Tim Moore, with those lengthy steps, managed yeah, to... Yeah, lengthy. <laughs> I, it was border, <laughs> thought it was a travel bay. Yeah. Like I said once yeah. before, if ref don't call it, didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> didn't happen. But that was a great, you know, they had numbers, you know, it was a great drive by him. So now he's got to capitalize on the free throws. There we go. And he hits the first one, extends it back up to double digits. Like I say, free throws is free. It's easy money, you mm -hmm. know? Yes, once Tim Moore gets in the zone, he, he can definitely put up 20 points if he wants to. I've seen him in the zone when we were playing, like, outside in the park. But he, had, he definitely has the shooting ability and scoring ability to score 20 points. You know, like I said, he's a, he's a great all-around player, you know? He knows how to get to the rim, you know? Also, he, he's great on defense, you know, lock-up defender. I think being a lefty, that always, like, troubles the defender sometimes if you don't realize somebody's left-handed. That's Contra Costa with 18 seconds left, gets into the post. Nice spin move. Yeah. Solon, their leading scorer, with a nice post move on Hosea. Yes, he actually got away with the wraparound and moved Hosea out the way. I've seen Hosea kind of complaining about that. You know, that's a lot of stuff that happens on the floor that, that people don't know about. And yeah. Great addition <laughs> from yeah. R.J. Lewis to Jesse Carey. Nice little shovel pass off that pick and roll as they're going to call Arash for the foul away from the ball. So he'll shoot one and one. Or he might shoot two if they give him a continuation. Oh, yeah, that's that changed now. Because, you know, in girls basketball, we play quarters mm -hmm. now, and there's no more one and one. Mm -hmm. Forgot all about that. I got a little adjustment back to the male game who's yeah, still. Yeah, that's kind of it's kind of weird, you know, coaching through that, but you know. How is coaching coming back to Solano? I actually love player? it. Yeah. I love coaching, you know. What's the difference between being a coach versus being a player? Um nothing really except for they have to 
do what I say. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, like, I've always been, like, a vocal person, you know, mm -hmm. always been a vocal player. But I think, like, the coolest part is, like, spreading my knowledge, you know, to help to help kids out. I was once in this, you know, once here, you know, got, got a, a banner 2013, 2014, you know, put in a lot of work. But I just want to just spread that to them because also our team, This we actually have a very good chance of getting another ban banner this year, 3P. Just throw that out there. Yeah, speaking of threes, Cassandra Jones. Oh, my up from God. Three point range all CJ, season long. CJ, she's the guru. <laughs> <laughs> she's the guru. No, like literally I challenge her every day, like during practice to a three-point shooting drill. And yeah. I've won a couple times. You know, we, we make kind of like like little – little games here and there <laughs> but um she beat me like we played a five spots drill she beat mm. me to like 13 to 2 <laughs> oh wow and i'm her coach yeah <laughs> that's crazy yeah I she's even, a very great shooter i even thought about challenging her to a three-point contest <laughs> but i don't know now like her sister audrey you know they will play my year like yeah. she's a good shooter but cassandra is lights out so you pick out. Cassandra in a Jones versus Jones three-point contest? Uh, Audrey's probably going to be mad at me <laughs> after this, but hands down, CJ. Cassandra yeah. Jones. We might have to get them both in the gym to <laughs> I know. actually see that. Hey. We did a, we did a, a, a show with, uh, with Audrey and Nikki and Daya. We had them do a three-point contest for us, so maybe we can get both Jones sisters back. For yeah, and that might be something because I've literally seen – I've seen Audrey make 15 threes in a row, and literally in a row. Ray Jackson just hit a three-point shot to cut that lead for Solano down to nine. And you could get involved, too. Do you want to be involved in the Jones, Jones, White? Uh, <laughs> Jones, White, Jones. Jones, White, Jones? <laughs> Jones, White, Jones. <laughs> you could throw a Williams in there, too. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to be embarrassed. As Hosea with a nice drive he to just, off this first half. He knows where to go. He knows how to get to where he's going. You know? now, that's what I love about Hosea's game. You know? He's not one-dimensional. He's not just a shooter because he's small. You know? He gets where he's going. He reminds me of Curry. Yes. Another comparison would be Allen Iverson because Allen Iverson also knew where to go and how to get there. Oh, he was okay. very determined to yeah, and get those Two is seconds. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree. And just takes off the rim, so Barfield <laughs> almost hit that three-point shot to cap off a sensational first half. But as is, Solano leads 40-29. to 29. Nicole, what are your thoughts on this first half that Solano has gotten to this 11-point advantage? Great first half by Solano. They're executing on all cylinders. You know, it's really key that, that they don't beat themselves. They have to make Contra Costa beat them because, you know, they, they are very athletic and they get after it, you know. But the game is far from over, far from over. Just like we watched the Mendocino game. They had a 30-point lead and they got cut all the way down to what, single digits? Yeah, it was, point, down it was like down digits, to nine. Yeah. Down to nine. You know, they just have to keep their poise, you know, and keep it going, keep their foot on the gas. Because if they let up just a little bit on Contra Costa, they're going to run away. And on the flip side, Anthony, what does Contra Costa have to do to put, put the foot to the throttle to come back in this game? Well, they have to stop shooting the ball because you can see it is really hurting them. They are not hitting their shots at all from mid-range or the three-point. They have to make Solano move and get the ball inside the paint. When they get the ball inside the paint, good things happen. They draw fouls and they get... Um, easy buckets. And we will see if oh, Contra Costa, <laughs> one of the smallest fans for the Falcons, we'll see if Contra Costa can come back in this game or if Solano can keep this lead and pull out yet another victory. And we will have that right after this message. Hi, everybody. Greg Poff here in the Solano College Sports Network studio to tell you about a great opportunity here at Solano Community College where we are the only college in the nation to have our own sports broadcasting program. So if you're interested in a career in sports broadcasting, Solano Community College is the place for you. And we offer students training in all aspects of sports broadcasting, whether it's behind the microphone, using a camera, or learning to operate our state-of-the-art TV production system in our newly renovated TV studio or out in the field covering an actual live Solano Community College sports event. At SCC, our sports broadcasting program is responsible for providing broadcasts of Solano sports events and creating shows to be telecast on Fairfield's Channel 28, as well as webcasts on our Solano College Sports Network YouTube channel and our Facebook page. 
So if you're interested in taking one of our sports broadcasting courses, you will find them listed in the SCC schedule of classes each and every semester under communication studies. Also, by the end of this spring semester, we will have a certificated program in place where you can earn a certificate in the field of sports broadcasting that has you ready and prepared for an entry level position in that particular career. So come on over, check us out. You can find us in the TV studio in room 121 on the main campus at Solano Community College in Fairfield, California. And remember, here at Solano College Sports Network, it's more than just sports. It's an education. And we're back with the second half. We lost Nicole White. Uh, I'd like to thank Nicole for joining us in this first half. She brought a lot of good information, a lot of good energy. So thank you, Nicole, for providing our broadcast with that extra. I don't know. It's nice having three people in there. It's easy for us to have a good dynamic. So we'll see how Solano responds to try and keep this lead as Javon Adams with a nice backdoor cut, not able to hit that layup. I like to see Solano come out really aggressive. Um, Javon Adams has the ability to get to the hole whenever he wants to. It's nice to see them be aggressive. And Sivan Thong tries to hit a three, and it's just short. Jesse Carey wide open, pump fake, and he passes out to Davis. Davis tried to lob it into Martinez, but that was telegraphed and picked off by the Comets. On the other end, the Comets try and lay it up, and they are draw a foul. Anthony Sullen going to the line. Yes, and Contra Costa is coming out also aggressive. They need to be aggressive if they want to get this victory tonight. Yeah, Contra Costa are really in this game mainly because of second chance points. Their energy and hustle on the offensive board has allowed them to get second and third chances because their field goal percentage hasn't been great. They've been missing a lot of shots, um, forced a lot by the salon defense, but they've been able to get second chance points and I think without that, Solano could have a 20-point lead, potentially, as Solon splits free throws. So the score is 40 to 30, as Contra Costa going with the full court press. That pass was picked off by Siventhong, kicked out, and Larry Wicket able to lay it up and in. Contra Costa, they are very long, and if you throw any lazy passes, they will get in those lanes and steal the ball. And Solano able to get it into the half court in time. Good handoff to Davis, and he is fouled, and that basket will count. So Contra Costa laying up on defense after Solano getting into the half court, and Carey handed off to Davis. He had a wide open lane to the basket. Yes, that was awful defense by Contra Costa. They were trying to figure out who was going to rotate, but in that situation, the big man is always supposed to rotate. And I think that's why Contra Costa is calling an early timeout because that's an excusable defense. Yes. Just to stop them, you force turnovers on the previous possessions and were able to cut the lead to single digits, but then uh, just a mental lapse in uh, thinking. You lay an easy layup to Davis, and to top that, you foul him. So now he's a chance <laughs> for a three-point play. So a quick 30-second timeout so Contra Costa can resettle themselves down as Brandon Davis will go to the line. He's a 56% free throw shooter. He's also Solano's second leading scorer, averaging nine points per game. So he'll shoot one, try and make this a three point play. Yes, and Contra Costa makes an early substitution, putting Ray Jackson back in the game. I guess they're trying to get a spark on the offensive side. Side of the ball <laughs> as Ray Jackson gets the rebound, tries to kick it over, and that pass was wild as he tried to pass it into Deontay Smith in the paint. As RJ Lewis will check in for Brandon Davis. But interesting, Ray Jackson, at, although he averages, let's see, 14 points per game, he forced up a lot of shots in that first half, and he kind of contributed a lot to why. Contra Costa really didn't have that great of a field goal percentage as R.J. Lewis with a nice find to Javon Adams. Really, R.J. Lewis's passing ability on display right there. Yes. Also, that was a nice cut by Javon Adams. He read that the big man didn't rotate like he was supposed to again. And when you rotate late, 
um, bad things happen. As you can see, Javon Adams got the and one. So his free throw attempt is up and too strong. So Solano not able to hit both free throws on those last two and ones. As Simenthal makes a nice individual move, but they're going to call Contra Costa for the offensive foul. Deontay Smith with the legal screen. Yes, that was a nice, move, a nice move by Bobby, but unfortunately they got called for a foul. As that's four on Deontay Smith, so he checks out of the ball game. Jeremiah Alston checks in for him. RJ passes across court to Barfield. He settles down, but he dribbles it off his foot. Simenthong looking to counter. They have numbers if they can push. And RJ tips the ball. It lands out of bounds, so it'll still be Contra Costa ball. Yeah, it's nice read by RJ. He almost got the ball. If he would have moved a second later, he definitely would have had a nice fast break going for him. And then going back a couple plays, RJ Lewis has ha found a nice connection with Javon Adams. Uh, in that Mendocino game, there's a couple times where he looked down the court, found Javon streaking on a fast break to connect with the easy layup. And we saw on a couple plays ago, he finding Javon again with a nice backdoor cut. Yes, not only um, RJ and Javon, but the whole team has great chemistry together. And that lob is laid in by Larry Wickett putting those hops on display. Yes, nice, very nice athleticism. Like Nicole said, he can jump out the gym. And that pass was telegraphed. Seven thong able to intercept the ball. Brings it in the half court. Solon drives, looks for the cutter. Good tip by RJ, but Comets able to corral the ball. So they're gonna reset with 13 on the shot clock. Seven thong drives, stops, pops. And an air ball, but the air ball goes straight to the Comets. Six seconds, five, three-point shot, too strong. Offensive rebound, and they find Sullen. Those second-chance points, again, work for the Comets. Yes, it was nice defense. They, Contra Costa was playing very sloppy on that possession, but unfortunately, they did get a second-chance opportunity. Solano, they have to box out on these rebounds. Yeah, because those second-chance points are killing them right now. Keeping Contra Costa in this ball game, Contra Costa has cut this lead from 11 down to eight in this first half with the first two minutes and 36 seconds in this second half. And they call a timeout because of Contra Costa's press defense. Looks like Contra Costa's halftime adjustment on defense was to go with the full court press. So far, mixed results. Mm -hmm. When it's good, it forces turnovers, but we saw one of those bad calls, music communication. But there it was good causing Jesse Carey to force him to call a timeout. Yes, Contra Costa has to put pressure on Solano because at this point Solano is getting easy opportunities and it doesn't seem like they're phased by the defense of Contra Costa. But now that they put pressure on him, Solano has committed a few turnovers. As they have just two seconds to go across. Oh, now they decided to reset that 10 second clock. I was assuming that the shot clock, they have 10 seconds to get it across mm -hmm. half court, but because they called the timeout, they had a fresh 10 seconds to get it across. As Arash Aliar checks in the ball game for Jesse Carey, as well as Tim Moore. So Coach Nagel responding with putting more ball uh, handlers into the ball game. That's a smart move by Nagel, because now with more ball handlers, you don't have, you have people that's not phased by pressure. A nice give and go. Davis battles inside for the rebound, tipping, and the ball gets stuck, so it'll be a jump ball. Comets arrow possession. Possession arrow in English. <laughs> <laughs> but now Solano's lineup looks like Arash Aliar with Brandon Davis and Josea Barfield with a three-guard look with Tim Moore and Javon Adams at forward. Yes. Solano, they don't have an uh, actual center on the court right now. They have Tim Moore, who is a very lanky playing center, and he also is a ball handler, so it can be very scary. And Jeremiah Alston, who made that bucket, steals the ball away from Tim Moore. It'll be a jump ball. It should be Solano ball. They didn't reset the possession error to go the other way. And so Steven Jefferson will check in the ball game for Tim Moore. I think Coach Nagel didn't like that. Tim got that ball taken away from him, so put in a, another ball handler. Yes, 
you can't try to dribble too much against the press because they will trap you and cause turnover. As Hosea kicks it out into the post, Jefferson, nice hook, just didn't get the right angle off the backboard. Rebound by the Comet, Simenthong presses, pull up jumper, off the mark, long rebound again to the Comets, Larry Wicket driving to his right, lays the ball up and in. Great individual move by Larry Wicket. Yes, yeah, nice aggressive move by Wicket. And speaking of aggressive comments, call for the foul on Javon Adams. Number 25, Jeremiah Alston. So that's five personal fouls within the first four minutes. So Solano, the good thing about being in foul trouble, you'll get one and one quicker, and then you'll get in the penalty quicker. Yes, Contra Costa, they need to kind of settle down. They're being a little too aggressive on the defensive side. Like you said, they already have five fouls within the first four minutes. So they need to adjust quickly. As Jose gets the screen, good defense, moving your feet by Contra Costa. Spin move, tries to drive in, and he draws the foul. So a six-team foul within the first four minutes and 10 seconds. Going to be an interesting dilemma for the Contra Costa. Keep the aggression, but from now on, at least a one-on-one -on -one for Solano. Yes, I would like to see Solano spread the floor and kind of have a pick and roll with Jefferson and Davis because, as you can see, Contra Costa, they are rotating late and they are getting um, easy basket opportunities. So it's a fresh shot clock. Nice pass inside to Barfield. Better pass to Jefferson inside. And then they're going to call him for a travel inside the paint after being swarmed by the Comets defense. Yes, if you're Jefferson, you have to just go up with that one. Even if you get blocked, just go up, you might draw a foul. As the Comets have cut this lead down to just four points for Solano, Wicket, spin move on Adams, just throws it up. Jefferson with the rebound. Davis, outlet pass to Aliard, tries to save it, and he does to Jefferson. Aliar even went outside the door. He was running so fast. Yeah, watch out, Harry, <laughs> our side <laughs> cameraman. He's a slow mover, Harry is, so <laughs> got to protect Harry. <laughs> As Aliar gets fouled, so on that drive, it's going to be at least one and one Yeah, I think Harry can take a hit. Yeah. <laughs> we saw him at the football game against uh, Solano, <laughs> uh, our speech and bait team. Surprisingly more active than I thought he would be. <laughs> <laughs> As Patrick Ganaway checks in for Steven Jefferson. And Contra Costa, Jason Wright checking in for Jalen Walton. As well as DeAndre Russell. With Anthony Sullen. And Dwight Wilson for Contra Costa as Aliar hits the first of the one to one. Yes. Important, just a 62% free throw shooter for Aliar. Like you talked about, they have one and one opportunities now. And this might hurt Contra Costa going forward. It allows Solano to get free points without any time coming off the clock. So in a close game, that really matters. Yes, but Solano does have to hit the free throws in order for it to work effectively. So Simenthong in the comments with 10 seconds left. Throws it into the post to Russell. Takes a little couple crab dribbles and Simenthong with a nice put back layup by the point guard. Yes, I remember Bobby from AAU games. He, he was always a rebounding point guard. He does everything. Yeah, he has a lot of spring in those legs. Yes, he was one of the people dunking earlier, too. <laughs> As Adams drives to his right, strong take and good for the layup for Javon Adams. Yes, Javon Adams is having a, a wonderful season so far. Ever since being inserted into the lineup, Javon averaging 7.6 points per game. Good for third on the team at, with a tie with Arash Aliar as Solon, with a layup, responds with two points. So the press was a little more lax there, allowing Solon again to the half court. 15 on the shot clock for Solano, as Javon Adams and Solano setting up their play. They kick it to Hosea. Gonna get a screen from Ganaway. Nice crossover move to get away from the defense. 
And Hosea will go to the line for two, yeah. for one and one, excuse me. Hosea is having a wonderful game. He, he has put the team on his back. And he, he is showing great leadership. Yeah, I thought Contra Costa did a good job of moving their feet for the big man to close out on him, but he just made a nice quick crossover and he just shook his, the defender off of him and he had a clear lane, so they were forced to foul him. Yes, not only is he a, a great shooter, but he also has the quickness to get to the paint. And we've seen the entire arsenal from Barfield dribbling, penetrating, and getting good layups, but also shooting threes as he nails the first one. RJ Lewis thought he was going to check in, but he's going in for the shooter. And he hits both free throws. Some big free throws there by Hosea as RJ checks in for him. So Contra Costa has Larry Wickett in with Jalen Walton, along with Anthony Solon, DeAndre Russell, and Bobby Siventhong. For Solana, Arash Aliar with Brandon Davis in the backcourt, RJ Lewis, Javon Adams, and Patrick Ganaway in the front court. Six point ball game. Siventhong, pump fake, put it into the post for Wicket. Nice spin move. That floater is just too short. He will get the rebound though, and he puts it back on the other side. Yes, the second chance opportunities are hurting Solano. They kind of showed a little 2 3, if I'm not mistaken, but Wicket still got the rebound and got the and one. Yeah, so this last 13 06 stretch for Solano really have to box out and change this momentum that Contra Costa is getting as Wicket goes to the line. Gonna be short, and again, that rebound was dangerous. It landed on the court as Ganaway telegraphed that pass. Sivan Thong playing the passing lane, lays it up and short. Rebound by RJ Lewis, brings the ball down, and he is gonna be called for a foul. A little tussle there. It's Bay Valley Conference. It's an important game for these two squads, so motion's running a little high. but. That loose ball foul will send RJ to the line, I believe. And the refs are talking to the players, make sure cooler heads prevail. As RJ will go to the line, shoot two for, excuse me, one and one. Yes, you don't want to see anybody get thrown out of this game. This is very competitive, and both teams are very aggressive this half. And this will send RJ to the line. He is. He's technically the third best free throw shooter, but I believe Jesse Carey is 100%, and he doesn't go to the line all that much. So <laughs> really, he's the second best behind Hosea, 74% free throw shooter. And from now on, with 19 fouls, Solano gets two shots, guaranteed. So this one on one able to hit the first. So Solano has had three opportunities at a one on one has hit the first free throw each time. So that's important in order to get those points on the board. Yes, because they need all the points they can get. Contra Costa is right on their tail, and if they miss any free throw, then it could really hurt them. Yeah, really haven't seen much from the half court set or even in transition buckets. A lot of their points coming from this line. Yes, as you, um, if you remember from the Mendocino game, Mendocino was the one getting to the line a lot, but they were missing free throws. Mm -hmm. Solano has to, has to take these opportunities while they can. So Contra Costa drives to the left, pull up. Solon has the ball on the wing. Drives to his right, kicks out to the corner. Jackson drives to his right. Nice bounce pass into the post. They're gonna call a foul on Patrick Ganaway. Send Deontay Smith to the line. That's a good bounce pass there by Ray Jackson as he was driving. Draws a lot of attention because of his athleticism and his propensity to shoot. So catch him off guard by doing a little dump off pass. Yes, Ray Jackson kind of reminds me of J.R. Smith, kind of. Mm. If he gets hot, then there's no stopping him. It's going to be important, too, in a close game like this if he somehow heats up in the last 12 minutes of this ball game, Solano could be in trouble. 
as they miss the second gang rebound by RJ Lewis. Trying to full court press, but Javon Adams able to dribb dribble out of it. So good job by Solano rebounding that ball and getting into the half court without turning it over. As Hosea Barfield checked back into the ball game with Aliar and Martinez as well, who sets the screen for Lewis, driving to his left, dribble the ball off his foot, and they're going to call RJ for a loose ball foul. Yes, I like this small ball lineup by Solano because you have three ball handlers and LER, RJ, Lewis, and Hosea. Mm -hmm. Really the guy that if you're con uh, Contra Casa that you have to swarm is the center, Lorenzo Martinez, who's obviously not a ball handler. But the big guys are aware of what they have to do in a full court press. Yes. Just get to the open spot and don't dribble. <laughs> As that layup by Sullen is too strong, rebounded by Barfield, kicks it out to Allier on the corner, pump fake. Gonna dribble it out. RJ Lewis in the corner. He pump fakes and dribbles it out. Kicks it up to Aliar. Gets the screen from Martinez. Nice blocking foul call on Aliar. And I don't know if he has some soccer in his past, but he <laughs> accentuated, we'll call it an accentuation <laughs> uh, on that drive. Very managing, good call with that. Right. Just kind of, well, James Harden, just throw, throw your head back and. Well, James Harden, he kind of takes it to a whole nother level. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen anybody shoot 26 free throws ever <laughs> before James Harden. As Aliar hits the first, as Contra Costa has Larry Wickett and Bobby Siventhong back into the game. Larry Wickett having a big impact in this second half with his athleticism. Missing his first shot usually, but his activity on the offensive rebounding has given him good looks. Yes, they should run a, a two-man game with Bobby and Wicket. As Wicket again with the jumper. Cuts the sleep down to five. See if Solano can respond in the half court. Adams hands it off to Barfield. Up top, Simenthong kicks it out to Adams. Pump fake out to Barfield for three. Wide open, and he hits it. Contra Costa did a great job of closing out on Barfield, but not on that attempt. No, you can't leave Barfield open. He will hit those shots if he gets the opportunity. They should have closed out on Barfield and just let um, Aliar get to the hole. It would have been a lot better, and maybe he misses the layup um, if Contra Costa contested right. That's wicked. With the elbow jumper, so Wicket's starting to feel it a little bit. Yes, he's starting to heat up. So it'll be interesting to see if this turns into a one-on-one, -on -one, star versus star, Wicket versus Barfield type of game. As we have 10 minutes remaining in this second half, Solano leads by six. Try to free Barfield on a screen out there. And again, Contra Costa's defense gonna send Arash Aliar to the line. Yes, Jackson was a little too aggressive on that one. Aliar, he knows how to how to draw fouls. Yeah, he that's a skill he's quite adept at as he goes to the line. Yet again, Arash Aliar misses that first one. For somebody who goes to the line as frequently as he does, you like to see his. Percentage a little bit higher than 62. Really, he'd be, if he's around the 75, it'd be a lot uh, better for that type of play. But he hits the second, just like his average says. So he splits it. As it is a seven point ball game. Contra Costa, they're gonna call a kickball, I believe. Yes, they need to get Wicket involved in a pick and roll situation. Because if they get Solano rotating, then Wicket will be open for a, a mid-range shot as he's been hitting in the second half, or he might get the lane and go for a dunk and get this Contra Costa team rallied up. Yeah, Wicket being able to hit those shots from the outside really opens up his entire game. As Siventhong is wide open for three, shot is long, rebound into Contra Costa, back to Siventhong. 
dumps it inside to the paint. DeAndre Russell gets rewarded for his hustle. Yes, you have to reward the big man. That's a good pass by Barfield into Adams. Back out to Barfield to break the press. Barfield drives to his right, kicks it out to Adams. And they're going to settle down. Barfield in the corner, sets up for three and is blocked out of bounds by Sullen. Yes, they're learning real quick. You can't give them any room. As they're going to call a foul there, send Hosea Barfield to the line. Foul on Larry Wicket. And that maybe is a strategy for Solano, is to get Larry Wicket into foul trouble potentially. Yes, they need Wicket. Um, he's been scoring for them this second half, and nobody else has really heated, um, been hot like he has. So Aliar, excuse me, will go to the line. He'll make the first as Patrick Ganaway checks in for Martinez and Contra Costa has Jeremiah Alston check in for Wicket. So Wicket is off the floor. That's an important stretch for Solana right now. Aliar misses the second. So Aliar has been splitting these free throws that he's been getting to the line quite often. As that corner three by Alston. And he makes it, so Arash Aliar makes a big mental mistake, and he is down on the court. Took a hard, hard fall. Yes, that's what Solano did not need that. Um, you don't have to jump at three-pointers. At least um, close out on him and contest the shot. Now Aliar gave him a chance to um, potentially have a four-point play, which will definitely get the team rallied up. Yeah. Contra Costa needed the spark of energy. A four-point play would definitely do it as you see Solano's head trainer, Allison Albert, the Hall of Fame trainer for Solano, checking in with Arash Aliar. So at this time, we'll pause for station identification. You're watching the Solano College Sports Network. Thank you for watching on all of our platforms. You can watch us on Channel 28 in Fairfield, the Fairfield Cable Access Channel, Think TV, as well as YouTube.com slash Solano College Sports Network. Also, check us out on Facebook, same deal, Solano College <laughs> Sports <laughs> Network, or follow us on our social media as, at SEC underscore Falcons for both Twitter and Instagram, as you see on the, the screen right there, as Arash Allier gets up holding his right side, so hope Arash is all right and just got the wind knocked out of him potentially as yeah. he's taking a deep breath in. Yeah, that can definitely hurt. I've had the wind knocked out of me, similar to um, Aliar, I tried to jump real high and block a teammate at practice, and he kind of went under me, and my foot caught his shoulder, and I flipped over and hit the ground real hard. Oh. I thought it was the end. I thought I was <laughs> dying because you are you have short breaths. Like, you're just like, <gasps> the whole time. Oh, I, so. thought, I thought you were talking about when you were flipping over. I thought you were seeing the light. As a oh, <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> as Javon Adams able to break the press. Gets it over to Ganaway. So 13 seconds on the shot clock as Barfield surveys the defense. Going to get a screen up high from Ganaway. Kick it out to Adams for three. Going to be too strong. Rebound to Alston as Contra Costa. They missed that free throw, so it was just that three-point shot that was made. So it's a three-point ball game into the... Then a call a foul on Josea Barfield in the post. As you can see, Contra Costa is playing with a lot more confidence than they have um, these past couple of minutes. Um, Solano can't let them get a whole bunch of momentum going forward because if they do, then it could be very, very ugly for Solano. As Alston for three yet again, that one rattles out. Simmonthong tried to tip it away, but Barfield able to corral that rebound and dribble through the defense and out. Brandon Davis up top. Coach Nagel calls out the play. RJ Lewis pull up three. And it's just short. Contra Costa has numbers if they can push Solon. Dribbles around. Wow. Adams try to throw it down. Didn't get enough height on that jump, so that dunk rattles out. As Barfield tries to take it to the hole. And then call a uh, travel on Josea Barfield. Yes. Uh, I know he was trying to get his team rallied up, but at the same time, you have to go for a simple layup. 
because right now you need all the points you can get. Mm -hmm. You have the momentum already. Sending down a thunderous dunk, that doesn't really do anything for momentum's sake. Uh, you really need the points more than you need a yes. uh, big dunk right now. As take a timeout right now, 7.41 left. 58-55 is your score. So, Anthony, what this is pretty much crucial for both sides. Solano had the 11-point lead at halftime. Contra Costa is coming back. What do you think Coach Nagel is telling his guys right now? Just calm down, relax, play your game. The Contra Costa has taken them out of their game. They they put the pressure on them to start the half, and you can see Solano has never has hasn't been the same since. They have to get back to their game, spread the floor, or run in transition. How do you find that kind of chemistry and that rhythm when you're being disrupted so much on the defensive end? How do you find that? Um, it's all about confidence, really. If you play with confidence um, and just trust your teammates, confidence and trust, that's all it takes. And this lineup, a very skilled lineup out there, I would say, with Brandon Davis and Hosea in the backcourt. Two veteran sophomore guards to kind of calm you down, kind of keep things in perspective, as well as the uh, skill set of Javon Adams and RJ Lewis at the four position with Ganaway in the middle as well. So good lineup out there trying to settle the storm as they don't call a foul and that one's going to rattle out. Alston, the putback is going to be called a foul. So the refs are kind of selective with the whistles. Not going to call every single foul with somebody going to the deck. Yes, they're letting them play, which is a good thing as, a, um, as we have seven and a half minutes left. So Alston, who hit that three-point shot in the corner with Aliar all over him, misses that free throw. As Tim Moore going to check in for R.J. Lewis. And for Contra Costa, Jalen Walton checks in. Alston, pretty good free throw shooter. And they're going to call a lane violation. So a mental mistake by Contra Costa costing them points. Yeah, 80% on the year is Jeremiah Alston. Ganaway gets the ball out to Barfield. Two on one if they hurry. Tim Moore try to lay that ball up. And that ball is going to be out of bounds off of Hosea Barfield. If you're Tim Moore, you have to come down with the ball and go up. You can't um, throw up a risky alley oop attempt, which you didn't have control of. Yeah, the acrobatic attempt by Tim Moore was no good. Hosea, give him a little pat on the head. Trying to sh show his teammate that he's like, all right, I got you, you know. Just because you make one mistake on one position in sports, you got to forget about that and move on. Yes, you can't let that um, stay in your head because that can drop your confidence. As Olsen gets the handoff, drives to his left. Good job protecting the ball from Barfield, and he lays it up and in. So this bench player, Jeremiah Alston, stepping up huge for the Comets, averaging 9.3 points on the season, really having a huge second half. Now, if Austin could get his game going and Wicket can get his game going again once he returns to the game, then it can be ugly for Solano. As he misses another free throw, Alston going to be called for a foul on that free throw rebound. Send Ganaway to the line for two. So Jeremiah Austin now has three personal fouls. And Ganaway will shoot two. Patrick Ganaway, 56% free throw shooter. So the first free throw from Ganaway. Is too strong. As Jesse Carey going to check in for Tim Moore. As Ganaway settles in for his second free throw. And that rattles out as well. So Solano not able to capitalize, leaving points at the line. Still a one point ball game. Yeah, Solano, um, they. They better hope that those free throws don't come back to haunt them. Alston feeling it for three. Hits it. He's heating up. You can see the confidence growing in Alston. Hitting a couple 
from long range. And Contra Costa gets their first lead since the first half. 60 to 58. They gotta say Javon had his foot on the end line as he caught that pass. Yeah, the momentum is shifting very quickly. And Contra Costa has Deontay Smith checking in. It's a little more size in there. So Contra Costa trying to build on their first lead since the first half as they send it into the post to Smith. Too strong, good rebound by Jesse Carey, not allowing a second chance possession. 25 seconds, they have three seconds again in the front court, they do, as they poke it away. But still, Solano ball, as RJ Lewis will check in for Javon Adams. And so Hosea will take the ball out with six minutes left in a two point ball game. Solano down two, gets a pick from Jesse Carey. Gonna be double teamed. Yeah, so Saya with seven on the shot clock. Gonna have to make a one-on-one -on -one move. Five, three, and counting. Spins, just throws it up and blocked by Contra Costa. Good defense from Contra Costa. Not great offense from Solano as they send it down court. That shot is no good. Rebound, huge. Jesse Carey battles and is off Contra Costa. So good break for Solano. Yes, yeah, Solano has to calm down. They're playing very sloppy right now. I think all the momentum right now is on Contra Costa's side. Solano really has been out of rhythm in the half court. As Contra Costa's Bobby Siventhong checks back in. And he's been huge in their full court press, being able to use his athleticism and his height to kind of hide behind the big bodies and then jump in the passing lane to steal the ball. As they tip the ball away, Dwight Wilson does. as Jesse Carey will be the inbounder. Trying to figure out this full court press that's been pretty effective for Contra Costa, forcing turnovers. Into RJ Lewis. Down the court to Brandon Davis. They have a two on one if they hurry. Davis lays it up and in. Ties up the ball game at 60 all. Yes, the thing about the Contra Costa press is that once the center goes to um, half court, they're playing a man-to-man -man press, basically. They're allowing Hosea to leak down court and causing the two-on-one fast break. As Contra Costa jacks up a three, that one's short, offensive rebound. Out to Alston, gonna be fouled by RJ Lewis. So the closeout on Alston three. I think his length just really bothers them on those closeouts. He kind of kicks out his legs. It's kind of an awkward Tayshawn Prince kind of shot. Yeah, yeah. it's like Reggie Miller, how he used to kick yeah. out his legs to get the, um, the call at the three-point line. So Solano not figuring out Alston's shooting delivery. And we thought Larry Wickett was the key for that first initial push by Contra Costa. Alston's play has really been able uh, has allowed Contra Costa to take the lead. Yes, Austin has definitely lifted this team up. And now, as you can see, they have the lead with five minutes remaining. That's a lot. Of, with a couple substitutions, Martinez and Javon Adams checking back in. So lineup looks like Davis and Barfield in the backcourt with Adams at the three, Jesse Carey at the four, and Martinez at center. Rebound's important here as Alston hits all three free throws. So it is a three point lead for Contra Costa with 452 and counting. Gotta look out behind for Martinez. Adams able to break the press. Hand off to Davis. Nice bounce pass inside, but better hands by Alston to steal that ball away as Contra Costa dribbles it off his foot. Jalen Walton with the turnover. Yeah, it's moving a little too fast, trying to capitalize on a fast break, but sometimes you do need to slow down and um, reset your offense. And so Xavier Smith checking in for Jesse Carey. Davis hands it off to Adams. 
Gonna look to get the ball into Barfield and they're gonna foul Ray Jackson overzealous there. Excuse me, not Ray Jackson, Jalen Walton. Too aggressive there. You gotta realize you're in the double bonus. And you'll send Solano's best free throw shooter to the line. Hosea will shoot two. First free throw is good. As RJ Lewis will check in for Brandon Davis. Nagel making a lot of substitutions, trying to keep his players fresh. His core of RJ Lewis, Hosea Barfield, Arash Aliar, who is still injured, by the way. Brandon Davis, uh, Tim Moore. You got to keep those bodies fresh. Yes, as you can see, um, Wicked has returned to the game, and he should be fresh, like you said, as the game goes on. Yeah, he had a nice long break. Austin's play was able to get that break as Austin hits a three. He kind of pushed off of Xavier Smith. Smith fell down, not able to recover. So Austin hits another three-point shot as Contra Costa expands the lead to four. Smith now hands it off to Adams. Adams, good pick by Solon in the open court. Tries to jam it home. Why would you try and jam it home as Solon steals the ball back and hits the layup from Martinez? <laughs> I was about to say, why would you try and jam it when you're up by four? But his hustle got got an extra layup and a potential extra point. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, Brian. He <laughs> he tried to throw it down, but he's lucky he got the rebound and the and one. So I guess coach won't make him run that practice this week. Yeah, had a little R. Kelly moment. He believed he could fly, but <laughs> couldn't get over the rim. But again, the hustle by Contra Costa really has cost Solano in this game. You miss a dunk, you get the rebound clean, but you don't realize that the man's behind you. He, he comes up from behind and swipes the ball away, steals it, lays it back up and in, and you get a three-point opportunity for Anthony Solano, their best shooter, averaging 16 points, 0.5 points per game. Now this timeout with 340 left. Huge for Solano. They have been out of rhythm this whole half, and credit Contra Costa for changing up their defense on in the second half and causing a lot more mental mistakes from Solano. Yes, Contra Costa definitely has outplayed Solano in the second half, but Solano still has a lot of time to make a comeback. And I'd like to see maybe Josea Barfield put the team back on his back potentially because he had an excellent first half shooting the ball not able to get clean looks in the second half because of Contra Costa. Really like to see him, any offense really, just uh, be in rhythm and get good looks in the half court set. As the timeout is over, Anthony Solomon will go to the line. It's a 62.5% free throw shooter. That free throw is no good. As RJ Lewis throws it up to Martinez. Gonna hand it off to Barfield, be safe there. So a six point ball game still. Barfield picked up his dribble, gonna be swarmed by Alston. Gonna be stolen away by Siventhong. Gonna lay the ball up and Solano draws the foul. So RJ Lewis, good job drawing the foul. That's risky being that both teams are in the double bonus. Yes, but Solano, they have to cut out the turnovers because they, the turnovers have definitely hurt them this second half. As Solano makes a couple substitutions with Brandon Davis and Chance Pippen making his first appearance this game. Javon Adams gets the ball, hands it off to Pippen. They're going to do a little weave play as Adams look for Martinez in the post. 15 seconds, Davis drives to his right, lays it up and out. Rebound, strong rebound by Deontay Smith. Counterattack. They're going to call the foul and one. Anthony Sullen draws the foul. Chance Pivot tried to draw the foul, but he got there too late. Yes, nice, nice side step by Sullen to draw the foul. That's really the way to try and avoid that charge is to do that side step because that means the defender will try and kind of lean over to get that content. Mm -hmm. That makes it real easy for the refs to see that kind of play. 
as Martinez gets the rebound, throws it out to RJ Lewis. Three on two fast break if they hurry. Nice pass inside to Davis, just off his fingertips from RJ Lewis. A very sloppy play by Solano. They and haven't they, been the same since Contra Costa um, took the momentum away from them. Yeah, they had the ball there with numbers. They had the opportunity to put points up in transition, which they would badly need for to get the momentum back as they steal the ball away from R.J. Lewis. Going to draw the foul and one. That's the type of play Solano needs to get back in this ball game. Yes, that's one way to get the momentum back. But they need to hit the free throws and capitalize on more shots and also play more defense. Yeah, that's all in one play. R.J. Lewis with the defense, the ability to be aware of the defender, kind of slow up. Know that the defender is coming, draw the foul, but take the contact and still be able to finish that layup. That was a good individual play from RJ Lewis on that possession. As Contra Costa makes a substitution with Dwight Wilson now at point guard in for Simenthong. Sullen out to Wicket. Alston drives to his left, floater. Gets the favorable roll, and Jeremiah also continues his hot second half. Yes, it looks like they're just going to play, um, play through Winston. I mean, play through um, ooh, Austin. My <laughs> bad. They're just going to play through Austin through the rest of the game. As Javon Adams answers with the layup, 147 left and counting, five-point ball game. You need to start making stops here if you're Solano, if you want to get a chance to get back in this ball game. Alston dumps it in the post to Smith. Nice post move, but I believe he's going to be called for a foul. Yes, it's on the ground. Basket does not count. So Lorenzo Martinez is going to be called for a foul. Send Deontay Smith to the line. Smith, not the worst. Decision for Solano being only a 38% free throw shooter. So send the big center to the free throw line. Let's hope I didn't jinx that for Solano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are Andre Drummond numbers right there. As he misses the first two strong. As Josea Barfield and Jesse Carey check in. And Coach Nagel's going to call timeout. Talk to his troops with 134 left. Five point ball game. So Anthony, Contra Costa has done a great job so far in this second half. They've come back from that 11-point deficit. They cut it. They're on the verge. And then you can't say enough about Jeremiah Alston in the second half and how his play really has sparked them and gotten them this lead back. Yes, Alston has definitely lifted the team this second half. He has played tremendous basketball. Um, without him, they might not have this lead in the second half. And you need to find those unsung players when players like Ray Jackson, your third leading scorer, haven't been in double digits like they normally are. So find somebody off the bench, that lefty, to put that extra punch to get you ahead. It really shows what kind of depth Contra Costa has. Yeah. Uh, talking to the coach before the game, I asked for his starters about an hour before the game. He said, I don't know. I just watch during uh, warm-ups and decide who my lineup is. That's got to be a good luxury as a coach to kind of see who's playing well that day, kind of plug in to a starting lineup if you have that kind of depth. Yes. So we'll see if Deontay Smith can't defy the numbers and uh, hit this one as the 6'7", 220 center. Shoots that one flat as Adams rebounds it. 130 and counting. Important possession for Solana. Try and get a bucket. Cut this down to two or three. Yes, they need to score right here and right now. As RJ Lewis gets the screen. 13 and counting. Going to drive to his left. Going to be called for the travel. Good defense there by Alston. So Alston doing it on both ends. As a couple substitutions, Siventhong and Aliar back into the game. So good to see Aliar back and healthy. But that was huge that Solano turned that ball over on that possession. Yeah, it's when they really needed a basket. 
So Contra Costa now has the ball with five point lead. And just a minute left in this ball game. As Siventhong with 15 on the shot clock. Brushes off Adams. Looks for Alston in the corner. Intercepted by Wicket. So the only thing to stop Alston is uh, his own teammate from uh, getting into the ball. Wicket into Alston. And he hits another basket. Jeremiah Alston. Yeah. Jeremiah Alston has definitely been on fire this second half. So 30 seconds in counting. Davis heaves up a three off the backboard. Adams with the offensive rebound. Going to get the putback. Going to call a timeout. So now you got to play the foul free throw line game yes. with it being in the double bonus. You got to choose the worst free throw shooter. Hope they miss both. And uh, got to hope for that for 25 seconds and just hope you make one. They miss. It's a long shot, but stranger things have happened. Yeah, you'll never know. Like in 2013, I believe, when the Heat played the Spurs in the finals, and they fouled, I believe it was Kawhi Leonard the first time, and he missed one. Then they hit a three and then fouled um, Manu Ginobili and then set up Ray Allen's great three-point shot. So 25 seconds left in this five-point ball game. We have Bobby Siventhong, Larry Wicket, Anthony Sullen, as well as Dwight Wilson, and the aforementioned Jeremiah Alston, who's had the great second half. So a lot of smalls in there. Gonna play a full court as they get it into Wilson. Pass it out to Wicket. They're gonna foul Wicket. Arash Aliar does with 22.6 seconds left. Wicket is a 63% free throw shooter. So if you're Solano, you gotta hope that Wicket misses both of these. You get the rebound, you get a quick three or a good look at it too, because you need five points. Yeah, and I don't know what country Costa is thinking by inserting um, Deontay Smith into the game when he is a poor free throw shooter. Um, they better hope that Wicked doesn't miss or that Solano doesn't um, foul Deontay Smith. As Wicked hits both free throws, so clutch free throws from Deontay, Deontay Wicked. Larry Wicket, as they try and save the ball, Adams out to Jose Barfield, 4-3. That one's just long, rebound to Contra Costa. They're gonna bear hug him, send Jeremiah Alston to the line. Yeah, they should have pulled a, a hacker shack move <laughs> and fouled Deontay Smith on that one. I prefer like the Chris Paul move where you just kind of like jump on the big guy's back and kind of ride him <laughs> like a backpack. <laughs> as they send Alston, who's had the stellar second half to the line. He'll get a couple more points to look nice on the stat line. As he shoots the first, nails it. So 7.8 seconds left, Alston's second free throw is good. Nope, they're gonna call lane violation, so wave that free throw off. If you're Austin, you gotta be, come on, man. I could have had one more point on mine. <laughs> yes, it's always nice to add a couple of more stats to your stat sheet. As Lewis with the pull up three. Rebound of Contra Casa, and the clock will wind down. So your final score is Contra Costa 78, Solano 69. Wow. So Anthony, Contra Costa, they, the comeback effort, they were able to make up the 11 point deficit, win by nine. So in total, outscoring Solano by 20. How did they do it? Hey, it all comes down to defense. You see, they came out in the second half and put the pressure on Solano. And ever since um, Solano hasn't been the same, they started playing sloppy offense, and they just weren't the same team, and, sent, and they were out of, out of rhythm the whole second half. So credit Contra Costa. They get their 14th win on the season. Solano moves down to 5-10 and 10 on the year. But you gotta give uh, credit for Josea Barfield's first half. Uh, he allowed Solano to get that 11 point lead with his hot shooting. Uh, just Solano wasn't able to answer Contra Costa's adjustments at the second half and Contra Costa ends up pulling this one out by a final score of actually 77 to 69. So for all of us at Solano College Sports Network from our pr production crew, 
our camera people, Harry Singh, Ana Patera, Greg Poff, and Josh Redson. Uh, my name is Brian Nelson, Anthony Williams, and Nicole White, who joined us in this first half. Maybe that was the thing. Nicole White was our lucky charm. Uh, <laughs> for all of us, thank you for watching Salon College Sports Network. Check us out on all of our platforms. You have been watching the Salon College Sports Network. Thank you for watching.